Hello everybody and welcome back to Cooking and Kids. In today's episode we are taking you to state of Utah, to a place called Brian's Head. We are here to celebrate a Christmas and this year with a lot less presents and a lot more snow. Our family normally does only a few presents for Christmas to begin with, but this year we are keeping it to the absolute minimum and we are replacing the rush and stress of a holiday season with creating more family time and creating more memories. What could be better on a cold winter day than being together in a cozy room filled with the fragrance of freshly baked cinnamon rolls? It's a year later since we visited Brian's Head and Marco and I will share our healthier version of cinnamon rolls. Holidays and baking go hand in hand and today happens to be another Christmas Eve and this is a perfect time to share this recipe. I'm busy baking for tonight's gathering as we are invited to join our neighbors for a Christmas Eve party. After all, cinnamon rolls are one of those perfect baked goods to gather around with family and friends. There's just something about the freshly baked cinnamon rolls served with a warm cup of tea or a warm cup of milk. The road takes us from Southern California straight to Brian's Head, which is just a little bit above St. Georgetown in Utah. We don't have a lot of snow in Southern California, and because of that, this year, we wanted to give a whole lot of snow to our family for Christmas. I'm also hoping to put Marco and Michaela on the skis for the first time and to see if I remember how to do it myself. By far, this was one of our best Christmases ever. Our one-bedroom studio had a beautiful fireplace in the middle of it and a gorgeous views of the snowy slopes. Just like our place, our Christmas tree was miniature as well. Mickey, being the creative one in a family, put together this little wire Christmas tree and decorations were homemade too. Everything was simple so that we can have more time to rest and to be together. Most of the parents agree that children grow up way too fast. And indeed, childhood is relatively short. Yes. Oh! oh! Wow! All right, girl, what you got? Let me make the snowball first. And that's why it's so important that we pull our kids away from electronic devices to give them opportunity to be kids and to play. One thing is for sure, and that is the time spent together with your kids and time in nature will never get out of style. Ice dragon, go beastie. Uh. 
It was wonderful to see my two teenagers being kids again. Our beautiful day of playing in the snow was finished with the freshly baked cinnamon rolls and a warm cup of milk. Unlike the cinnamon rolls that we're gonna show you in a little bit, these were semi-homemade. But before we head down the hill and I get back in the kitchen, I gotta give it a shot at this snow jumping thing. It's a year later and this time we're celebrating Christmas Eve at home with the lots of rain instead of snow. We so enjoyed keeping our Christmas simple that this year we're doing the same. A small Christmas tree with few homemade decorations and a bouquet of fresh tulips is all that's needed. And since we couldn't make a homemade cinnamon rolls while we were in Brian's head, Today is Christmas Eve and it's a perfect opportunity to show you how to make cinnamon rolls from scratch. So we're starting with a cup of uh, milk. I have an oat milk, but regular milk would be even better. A teaspoon of sugar and we're going to do about three teaspoons of yeast. Then we're going to bring this mixture on a low fire to make it just a lukewarm. Mark found a perfect lemon. This is looking good. And so um, next step is to add flour. And I'm gonna add, I'm gonna start with four and a half cups of flour. I like adding a little more substance to my dough. And here I have uh, raw pumpkin seeds, some flax seeds and some chia seeds. So, so the goal is here is to add a little bit more flavor, a little more nutrition, and obviously with that you're adding a fiber, protein, and all that stuff to your dough. And it's also going to give a, a little bit different texture and color. So I'll just go ahead and blend these and add it to flour. Our yeast is activating. And now we're going to add about a half a cup of olive oil. So we're going to approximately about a tablespoon of vanilla. And um, we're going to add some of the lemon zest. And lemon zest is for your preference. So uh, half would be enough, but if you like a little bit more, just add as much as you like. Now let's bring the milk, yeast, and olive oil mixture with the flour. So while you're working with the dough, we can, I have another cup of warm water. This is just the lukewarm water that we're gonna add to the dough. So continue to add water gradually, and I think we're gonna end up needing about two cups of warm water because um, we wanna uh, create a very soft dough before we uh, go into a finishing phase. When working the dough, there are a few things to pay attention to, and one of them is the room temperature, because the, the, the speed at which the dough will rise very much depends on the room temperature. The next thing is the moisture of the dough. If you want to have a nice fluffy dough, you need to have enough moisture for bacteria to grow in, uh, in your dough. So, as you see right now, we have this sticky substance. It looks too thin, too sticky but actually this is exactly what we want and this is a good consistency at which you can blend all the ingredients inside the dough really good and now it's this is a like a finishing stage of making your dough uh, this is a, you just add some flour clean your hands really good now it's just incorporating that extra flour and these extra pieces back into the dough some people will prefer not to do this. They will dispose of these little crumbs on the bottom. But um, the way I grew up, you know, my grandmother always said, don't waste. And um, if we allow this dough to sit long enough, uh, all these little pieces will incorporate very nicely into the dough itself. So, and the next step is we'll just, we'll let the dough rest and rise. 
We have all the pieces in. I'm just going to put a little bit more flour on the bottom like this. And then we're going to tuck in the dough and let it rest. To help the rice keep it in a warm place, I have it on stove and I'll turn the oven on so that it will keep the stove warm, lukewarm. Don't forget to cover it so the dough does not create a crust. And while the dough is rising, Marco and I will show you how to prepare the cinnamon sugar stuffing. But first, I gotta clean up. I was ready to make the sugar mixture and realized our brown sugar was hard as a rock. So I had to call my son Marco and use some of his muscles to help me scratch enough sugar for a recipe. We're using two cups of brown sugar, two tablespoons of cinnamon, also decided to use just a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. Next are homegrown raisins. So, yeah, it's pretty cool when you can use your own raisins in your own recipe. So, it's like, you can brand it. It's like 100% homemade. Mm -hmm. You need to get about a cup of these. And you need to sort through to make sure there's no stem. And take the stem off. Just a cup. We're going to add them to the this thing now the sugar. Marco is absolutely right when he says that it feels so good to make food out of the ingredients that you have grown yourself, like these raisins. And um, I'm going back to the mixture here and I just want to point out that we have about two and a half cups of brown sugar, we have a little bit of nutmeg and we have about two tablespoons of cinnamon and some raisins. Now, when making desserts like this, I always feel a bit guilty for, you know, making carbs, sweet carbs, basically. Uh, it's a flour plus the sugar, so it's, it's double trouble, if you know what I mean. So to make myself feel a little bit better about serving these to my kids, I keep adding these special seeds to our recipes. So we added about a cup of these seeds to the dough, and I just ground it additional cup. And I'm gonna add this to this mixture as well. So while having a dessert, there's something actually substantial and good in uh, in this in these cinnamon rolls, so that I feel less guilty for serving them. Adding seeds like these to your recipes to your baking, it's such an easy thing, and it definitely adds a lot, lots of nutrition to your desserts. Cinnamon and sugar mixture is done and the dough is still rising, which gives me a chance to finish up our soup today. I love making soups. In fact, I believe that we all should eat more spoon food, especially on a day like this one. Since it's so cold outside and it's raining, a homemade vegetable soup is a perfect dish for this afternoon. So it's been about 40 minutes and the dough has uh, risen and I'm just gonna um, work it again. And if you can see, it's really nice and smooth and it's light and this is what we want. And so uh, the reason we're gonna redo the dough is just gonna combine it a little bit more and we're gonna let it rise again before we stretch it and fill it with cinnamon um, sugar. On the other note, I just wanna point out that uh, this program is produced and brought to you by a charity called Body Seeds of Life and um, we try to keep it very simple and very real and the point of uh, us sharing good cooking adventures and traveling adventures with you is actually to encourage you to reconnect with your family and with your neighbors and to go and explore the world. So um, unlike a lot of shows out there, they are strictly entertaining. We kind of like to bring you home to our real life and to what's going on in our trips so that um, you too might uh, care and decide to do the same with your family. The dough is back to rise one more time, which gives Kits and I a chance to grab a bowl of soup and have a quick lunch. In one of our next episodes, I will make sure to share the recipe for a hearty homemade vegetable soup. The next step. 
So for that, you're going to need a tablecloth or a kitchen towel, a large kitchen towel. Uh, this particular thing was given to me by my 93-year-old friend who was a phenomenal baker. She was Hungarian-German or German-Hungarian and she married a Serbian a man during the World War II and they both moved to States. So um, I ran into her in a doctor's office one day and uh, you know, I heard her talking Serbian to her husband. By the way, that was not obviously her native language, she learned it and um, we became very, very good friends. She was a phenomenal, phenomenal baker and so this is one of the memories she left with me and uh, I use it often when I bake because uh, I like to think about her. Right now, you can just work on it once again. And by the way, uh, this dough smells so good. You can smell the lemon, you can smell the vanilla, and you can also smell all the nuts, the nutty dough. It's, it's really, really nice. You know, just the rolling pin. And this one, my daughter just bought this one recently for me. She saw my mom having one of these flat rolling pins. And uh, when she saw this one in the store, she said like, oh, I think you're gonna like this, mama. So um, rolling pins like this were specifically made for pasta, for making very, very thin pasta. So when you work your hands through it, you see your hands will go to the lower and lower point. There was more thickness here, so this will create more pressure in the middle part and it will stretch pasta out. So um, that's, I'm just trying to kind of share with you why these rolling pins look this way versus the ones that we, we normally use and see. Work from the middle part out like this. See, instead of going back and forth all the way, you want to stretch the middle part. Okay, and you want to work in both directions. Between rolling the dough, you want to use your hands to kind of guide it in a shape that you would like it to be. So stretch it a little bit, position it, and then just go back to it. Now, I should mention that um, depending on the size of your cinnamon rolls, uh, the thickness of the dough will be different. Uh, if you want to make them smaller, you can go thinner, you'll have smaller uh, cinnamon rolls and you can have more of them, or if you want them really thick, you know, you can leave it at this thickness, let them rise a little bit more, and you can make giant cinnamon rolls. So I'm, get, I'm aiming to be somewhere in the middle. All right, we got it to the thick and thinness uh, that we like. Now uh, we're going to add some butter. And with that, you want a room temperature butter or butter that's it's liquidy like this, but not completely liquid. So we want to make sure that we put enough butter on the entire dough. Beside adding flavor to cinnamon rolls, butter will also help melt the sugar and help the sugar and cinnamon stick to the walls of the dough. While my hand is nice and greasy, I'm also gonna put some butter on the bottom of this baking dish. We are ready to add the cinnamon and sugar. So the best way to do that is to use your hand and spread it out as evenly as possible. All right, this is now the most exciting part. And so uh, for those of you who are bakers, you know the deal, what the deal is with rolling the strudel for me and one lesson that I learned from my mom is to keep this part of the cloth really straight, like, like straighten it, tighten it between your fingers so that you can work with this entire area here. You have a control over it. So we'll go with the first one. And the first one, I like to go in and tuck it in or shape it a little bit more with my fingers, like that. And then we're just gonna roll it. Again, keep the cloth nice and tight. And it's beautiful. Perfect. But, um, the middle part seems to be a little bit thicker than the ends, so use your fingers to stretch it all out. 
and then we're gonna cut it and set it in a baking dish. So for cutting, a good sharp knife is the is a key. Again, uh, you can make your cinnamon rolls smaller, you can make them very thick. It really depends on you and the number of people you're serving. We have a, a, a large gathering to go to tonight, so I'm gonna try to make them a, a middle size because there will be a lot of food there tonight. So we don't need big cinnamon rolls, we need them just you know, a little bit bigger than a bite size. This kind of dough can also be used to make all sorts of strudels. I grew up on these kind of desserts and to this day, a walnut strudel is one of my favorite holiday desserts. We have a nice thin dough. It's very really rich in good seeds. They're looking good. They're looking good so far. They will be even prettier once they rise and they get baked. I hope you will agree that this was relatively simple and easy. If you think that you might not have a time to bake like this, these cinnamon rolls can be made a day or a week ahead. Just keep them frozen until you're ready to bake and serve. So this Trey is going with us tonight to our neighbor's house and then uh, we have a little bit extra which we are going to share with some of our guests. Uh, we have Airbnb and tonight we have a family who's staying with us for Christmas, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and these will be for our guests. Alright, whatever has escaped from the cinnamon rolls, just scoop it up, pour it on top. Okay, and then uh, we're going to use the rest of the butter to sprinkle on top like this. Just a little bit more. And I know for a lot of you who are watching this, you think like, oh my gosh, this is way too much butter. And yes, I do agree. But um, cinnamon rolls are not made often. And when you do make them, um, I do, I make them at least the way they should be made. And... Uh, only comforting thing in all of this is that it's a real butter. It's not a shortening. It's not uh, any other junk, but uh, real olive oil and real butter. Okay, uh, we got it. And now we're going to let them uh, sit and rise once again before we bake them. Bake them on 350 for about 35 to 40 minutes. These are done and they are ready for tasting. <laughs> They're so darn good. Mm. Excellent. Cinnamon rolls are ready for tonight and the rain has stopped pouring. I don't know about you, but the rainy weather makes me want to go out and take a walk. Nature always looks like it just took a bath, and somehow everything is fresher and greener. So let's go and take a walk and see what we will find along the way. Oh my God, I can touch it. I can touch it. I've never had a rainbow in front of you where it's was right at my feet. Oh my goodness, I can see it right in front of me. The end of the rainbow, it's right here. Oh, this is just unbelievable. Right here. Oh, thank you, God. It's right here. This rainbow caught me by such a surprise that it literally brought me to tears. This was unbelievable. There it was, the beginning and the end of the rainbow right at my feet. Nature was truly giving today, including this beautiful eucalyptus tree, which was blossoming and providing much needed nectar to my bees.
I felt as if the eucalyptus tree was saying, I got beautiful flowers for you, so come and pick them. And so I did. I picked a few along with the other wildflowers to create a special bouquet for a Christmas Eve. We are so blessed to have so many wonderful things in our lives and sometimes all that's needed is for us to actually pay attention to them and notice them. Each one of us is blessed with its own unique talent. For me, cooking and baking always came naturally. So today I'm trying to use these gifts to help reconnect American families and communities through simple natural recipes and through a positive message of reconnecting with your family and with your neighbors. I hope this episode will inspire you to seek ways to simplify your life and in exchange to gain more time to do things that you're truly passionate about. After all, time is our most valuable asset, so invest it wisely. And above all, stay connected with your family and don't forget to share the fruits of your labors with others. Thank you so much for watching our episode today and for spending time with us. We are off to share our cinnamon rolls with our neighbors and to celebrate Christmas Eve together. By the way, we would love to hear from you. So if you like our program, please drop us a line at vladavi.com. Production and distribution of this program is made possible by charitable contributions of people like you. Our goal is to continue to provide family quality media to public access TV stations and to create programs that will be of positive and encouraging content. We would greatly appreciate if you individually or your company would consider supporting us or perhaps even sponsoring one of our future episodes of Cooking and Kids. All donations are tax deductible. Thank you again for watching our program. And before we go, I just want to wish you, your family, and your friends a safe and healthy holiday season.